You can also interpolate to TIN using QGIS. Again, simply just search in the processing toolbox and open up the tool. You can ha you have multiple inputs to the TIN, but we're using the contour points. You must, add, you must say what you're going to be using, the height values, and then you must add it as an input in terms of interpolation. I could now, for example, also add the contours as well, also on height, and add that as an additional input point, but it is not necessary for this exercise. So we'll be using the points. Then there are different types of methods, linear or cloud toucher, but that's linear one is fine. You must specify an extent. Now the, the extent will tell you what the um, spatial extent will be and the parameters derived from that. So for example, I can say I wanted to have the same spatial extent as my IDW interpolated layer. As you can see here, it's in a planar projection and UT it's in an LO27. And I can also specify my raster size. Now this is quite large. It will give me a 10 centimeter pixel size. That's not necessary. You can, for example, the, use the defaults, which is 300 rows, and it will automatically adjust. That will give me a cell size of 369 meters. What you can also do is you can use, for example, the cell sizes of your other rasters. These were in 412 meters. If you have a look at the properties, you can see that it is in fact 412 meters, or 413 rather. So you can also use that to have a consistent cell size across the extent. But the default for raster rows and columns is normally 300. Then you can save to file. So you will call this, or give this a usable name, for example, tin. You can also create the triangulation output, which is the vector lines that are used to create the triangular irregular network surface but it's not necessary and all that what you do then is you run it and you will have interpolated to a surface using tin and here it is so we have a starting height of 938 and a end height of 1797 almost 98 meters it looks very similar to the other outputs but you can see the triangular algorithm that runs behind it. If you, for example, compare that to the nearest neighbor or the IDW.